this is the newly redesigned 2023 Acer Swift X. And in this video, we're gonna unbox it to check out the new design, see the form, the build quality, the functionality, as well as check out the interior of the laptop. Because they're saying there's a rearrangement of the internal components to get better thermal temperatures and better efficiency. Now they're also saying that they've added a larger battery. So let's hope for some better battery life in this year's model. Because though this is a 14 inch on the go laptop, the battery life has been decent in years past. Now during my full review, I'll have all those benchmark results for the battery life. For this review, we're gonna check out the usability and assembly of the laptop to see if it's right for you. The Acer Swift X comes with a 100 watt charger block. I personally wish it was a little bit bigger because that would allow us to pull a little more power from the wall. For instance, the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13 comes with a 130 watt charger block toting the RTX 4070. So that's a little on the small side, I think, because I feel as if we could get a bit more power out of a slightly larger charger block, pull some more power from the wall to give us a little bit more performance, but that's just being ultra critical. Pulling the laptop out of the box for the first time, it feels a little bit lighter than last year's model a little bit thinner, less chunky. Uh, last year's model had a really, uh, really noticeable chunkiness about it. And this looks much more refined. Now we have an aluminum top cover, bottom cover, side panels, as well as an aluminum keyboard deck. I really like the design. It feels very improved. Uh, they've gone with the more of these 90 degree angles on the top cover instead of the rounded top cover. It kind of like came up a little bit in the center. This is flat across, flat down the sides. And we have this angle along the back side of the top cover going down into the back panel. We have our Swift writing here on the back panel for a little design touch. Ventilation on the bottom of the chassis. It looks like the actual ventilation only comes through here at the fan. This is all closed. So you have a large vent that actually is only a smaller vent, but you also have a vent here for either input or output. Um, going on the right side panel, you can see we have that micro SD card reader, USB type A and a Kensington lock. I really like how the top cover fits nicely into the side panel there. That's a cool design um, in the way that they have the laptop put together. Now going over to the left side panel, HDMI, USB type A, two USB type C's, and a headphone jack. Really great port selection, especially for an on-the-go laptop. I like the micro SD card reader for from a storage perspective. I hate on them a lot from a usability of bringing in footage or photos, but from a storage perspective, it's very nice to be able to purchase a micro SD card and slide in maybe 512 or one terabyte to give you more storage on the go. So it makes for a very nice option in expanding your storage, especially with little tiny micro SD cards. If perhaps you're somebody who's on the go, who's traveling a lot, you don't have to carry around a bunch of big hard drives to back up your footage. You can just carry around a stack of micro SD cards, which fits in a much smaller compartment, say in your backpack. I love the Samsung T5s and T7s, but they're quite large hard drives. It'd be nice to be able to back up your footage on something smaller. Now let's go ahead and open and close the laptop see how it opens and closes. Wow, very smoothly. That hinge uh, feels very easy to open and close. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't just fall over. It sticks very nicely. It's not too bouncy. They did the hinge very well. <laughs> it's kind of a weird thing, but I'm like most impressed by this hinge compared to any other laptop I've reviewed in quite a while. Um, let's go ahead and check out the screen flex real quick. Man, that moves so easy, but it's very, it locks into place as well. Great hinge. Um, we do have a bit of screen flex on that. You can see from the top angle, that's quite wobbly. Not a concern as far as build quality, but I know you guys want to see the screen flex. And for all of you that have been commenting how much you hate the tap test, I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> all right, let's do the tap test here. Feels and sounds a little bit on the hollow side. So the assembly has a little bit of give there on the top cover. Bottom cover feels nice though. A thinner aluminum material used, which causes a bit of that howl sound and that hollow feel, but overall the assembly is good. Uh, let's go ahead and spin over here and check out the interior of the laptop. We have the 2.8K OLED display. Looks great, really nice vibrant colors, even without having the color gamut range tested yet. We have a semi-thin bezel around the screen. It's a little bit thicker on the top than I would want, but the sides and the bottom look very nice. Now obviously we have a webcam up top here. Here's a quick sample of the webcam in use so you can see what that looks like. This is the webcam on the Acer Swift X and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now taking a look at the interior of the laptop, I'm really excited to see a large trackpad. 
and it's nice and quiet, nice dampened sound. It's not too clicky and loud. Here's a quick sample so you can kind of hear what that sounds like. So really improvement on the trackpad this year. In past, I've not been stoked on the Swift X trackpad, but this redesign, they've really upped their game on the trackpad. Keyboard feels nice under my fingers. It's a medium press, definitely plastic keys, but they don't feel too cheap on the plastic side. It's a bit of a softer plastic. Um, and then also there's a dampened sound to the key. So you don't have a loud keyboard or trackpad. So if you're in a quiet office or a classroom setting, you don't have to be concerned about clicking really loud or clicking your trackpad really loud and annoying your neighbors or fellow students. Full size shift key, yes, thank you. Uh, full size right and left arrow keys, small size, up and down arrow keys. Don't love that, but I way rather have the full size shift key, so I'll sacrifice the arrow keys. Man, I'm really liking that trackpad. It sounds nice, it's big, um, and so far it seems like it's a great option for this Swift X. Now right here on the front of the keyboard deck, they have this lip kind of angled down. That's really nice for resting your hands on your keyboard. It doesn't kind of cut into you too much. It's not sharp. A lot of times when they have 90 degree angles here, that's uncomfortable when you're resting your hands on the keyboard deck, so that was a very nice touch. Now it also acts as a way to easily kind of get in and grip your screen, because it's not like a perfect 90 degree angle where it's cutting off any area for your fingers to get in. So as I showed earlier, it's really easy to just grab your screen and get it open with one hand. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the Acer Swift X from 2023, I'll put links in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you, but of course that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now the model I have before me has the RTX 4050 GPU and the i7 13700H. I'm so glad that Acer decided to move to the new GPU as well as the 13th gen processor from Intel. I've seen quite a few companies go ahead and just throw an RTX 3050 even when they're bringing in Ryzen 7000 or Intel 13th gen. I'm happy Acer did not do that. So we're gonna see some nice performance tests out of this laptop in the future review or the one week later video. So definitely stay tuned to the channel or click or tap the screen at the end of this video to check out the benchmarks. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and flip the laptop over, pull off the bottom cover and check out if there's any upgrade path and what that new interior looks like. As I pull off the bottom cover, you can see the 74 watt hour battery, a larger battery. We're gonna see how that does for battery life on this new model. We have soldered RAM to the motherboard, as you can see here. We have the RAM that is soldered down, so you won't be able to upgrade the RAM. However, you do have access to the M.2 drive. So there is not an extra M.2 drive where you could add storage. However, you could swap out the M.2 drive that exists in the laptop, which is why mentioning earlier, the micro SD card reader is a nice touch for upgrading storage or adding storage to this laptop because there is only one M.2 drive. But as you can see with the newly redesigned thermal chamber and interior of the laptop, we have quite a large fan here for this small 14 inch form factor laptop. So I'm hoping that does well to cool the laptop and also maybe not get too loud while cooling the laptop. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase and click or tap the screen here for more videos about the Acer Swift X.